I have met women that know about Andrew Tate. I have met women that know about the red pill. Right. I have, um, I have met women that uh, are liberal. I have met women that are conservative. You know, I've met all types of different backgrounds that are more, as time goes on, more and more of them are online. And they, they more consume this con this pro-female uh, content about like how different ways to embarrass your man in public. You know, basically that's what it, look, it looks like. And, but that gap in between the internet being real life and real life being real life is very wide still. However, it is changing, but it it is not completely uh, mutually exclusive. There are overlaps between these dumb these dumb opinions that women say on Twitter, for example, and and women in real life. The problem is that in real life, you know, you're interacting with so much more than just words. You're looking at body language. You know, there's alcohol involved. You, you know, most guys look better in person. So she has that um, pleasant surprise that, hey, this guy's actually looking good in person. Women backwards rationalize all the pre preparation she did in order for the date as, hey, I'm actually like this guy because I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. I must really like him. Right. And that's how, you know, human connection in, in real world is very different from the Internet. Um, and also one thing, another thing about the Internet is that people on the Internet have a, a hard time describing the human experience online right because there's always that ego part of that they always pour themselves into the tweets or the work and all that stuff right and that my friends is why i my dating thread kind of stood out because i had zero ego when i wrote that i'm like eh, i'm just gonna write see because one of the things you'll notice as you date is that you're gonna get your ego crush you're gonna get your ego crush all the time you're gonna have you're gonna have your dream girl in your lap and she's gonna just walk out there saying hey i gotta go my friends are calling me and that sucks, right? But that humbles you in a way that you feel like, hey, I'm alive. I'm I'm actually in this. I'm looking at this from a, a real person perspective. And no one can take that away from me. And when when you write genuinely from the heart and from your experiences with no agenda, with no, hey, I want followers or anything like that, you will come across to people as authentic. Like authenticity is through your words, right? I can sit here and say I'm authentic, you know, but if you guys see the way I write and the way I talk, you know, a lot of people are like, dude, that story's crazy. How'd you get through that? Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, dude, it's just life. You know, like, what do you want me to do? I can't come out on top for everything. Right. And that's the thing about when you are online. Right. People online want to present themselves as the more ideal version of themselves. And it becomes you become inhuman. Right. You can see this in many different debates, many different uh, uh, pain points of dating in society as a whole. Right. Like, for example, um, the most common pain point that the Internet discusses in terms of dating, intersexual dynamics and um, how much it translates to real life and how, like, it is a thing and it's just as prevalent online as it is in person is the wall that is the number one thing that i say that i've experienced out in dating that we talk about it a lot on the internet but it translates almost a hundred percent to real life because you know there's screenshots of dating app profiles are like hey i'm 33 and i got two kids i want the man of my dreams or you'll have women that are like fighting writing six paragraphs about how they didn't hit the wall i'm like if you were 24, if you were 24, you wouldn't even think about the wall. You were like, what wall? I don't know what you're talking about. Right. But now it's just you're projecting onto us that, hey, I'm still hot. And these guys are dumb for noticing that I'm 30. And it's just like, no, we we're here to discuss how we can come out on top and win. Right. We're not here to discuss what, what the wall is or what the wall not is. We all have one goal. And the goal is more sexual options. Telling men to marry women that are older, that are not the best um, candidate for them, is not increasing sexual options. It's telling them what to do, right? We say, hey, if you like older women, dude, go for it. Or if you're already a single dad and you want to marry a single mom because they understand parenting and parenting schedules, dude, that's what the red pill is about. It's doing what's best for you, what you think is best for you. 
However, we're never going to tell you, marry up those single moms, you know, marry up those 30 old women. Just not going to happen. And they hate that. You know, we're going to recommend against it. And when I say recommend, we're going to say, this is what you're on the hook for, you know. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So superficial pre-selection, right? That's another reason. Uh, next reason would be uh, the people you go to to help you with these problems are misleading you and you're not getting it anywhere. When you first discover this red pill stuff, you become you get this like rush in your body, your face. You feel like you've discovered fire or you discovered some kind of ancient text. and You want to take it back to the museum and put it on display for everyone to see. It's it's very eye opening because you always knew deep down something was off. And then you finally found someone to put connect all the dots and make this picture of, hey, you are a fool. You you have been fooled. This is what you the little little spark inside of you when your mom was yelling at you because you weren't paying attention to her ranting or when your girl didn't uh, dump you because you were too nice or whatever. That spark in there. It's it it's always been there. You've always had that kind of like, hmm, I don't know. I feel like this is all wrong and I'm just I'm no, but I got to keep going because this is the way I was taught. And then you finally find the red pill and you're just like, holy shit, this is like I knew this all along. Why couldn't I, you know, um, but here's the thing. Once you finally start unplugging, you look for guidance. You look for other guys that have been through the same thing. Right. And you look for people that are know their shit because men we seek out when we seek out answers we also seek out what competence other men to teach us stuff right i want to learn piano so i don't seek a guy that just started playing piano i seek out a piano teacher right it's just a normal human thing to seek out a knowledgeable person right um you can men we respect competence and know and uh, people that are knowledgeable on subjects before anything else, right? Leaders, most leaders in today's world are there, are, are respected, not because of frame, not because of muscle, not because of charm or charisma. It's because they know their shit, right? In the nuclear Navy, I was pretty charming and a fun guy to hang out around with, right? But when my boss came in, he got more respect, right? Obviously the rank, but also it's because he knew his shit, right? He knew his shit. And uh, because of that, men are instinctively look for the most experienced person they, they know in their vicinity. Internet connects us all, so they look online and they're like, okay, this guy that plays guitars and has long hair and talks about hypergamy and all this stuff. This guy looks like he knows what he's talking about, so I'll follow him, right? And these two uh, black guys that sitting around a chair look like they know what they're talking about. Let me follow them, right? And so on and so forth, right? And <clears throat> like Rolo says sometimes, a lot of people aren't ready for a red pill or they take too much in or they're like, I want... Uh, I want to be in this space where I can look up to a guy and, and have him tell me what to do because me finding out on my own what I want is fucking terrifying. And trust me, it is one of the most terrifying things as a guy. It is so terrifying. Uh, so that's how that goes. You People mislead you. And, and, and here's the thing, guys. When you've been misled, right, stop blaming the people that you thought misled you. That's another thing. You got to take a little bit of accountability, right? Because if you keep going through life saying, oh, I was taught this and I didn't know, like, then then you keep pulling the string. It's like my dad was is my, my mom and dad. It's all their fault. And I'm like, no, dude, it's not your parents fault. You got to forgive your parents. You got to forgive all these people that misled you. Hey, they were very motivated by money and all that stuff. And that's OK. And the whole and the thing is, like, a lot of the times they don't mislead you. It's that you weren't able to pick out the important stuff. Right. Like when you study. A textbook, you're not going to study the whole textbook. You're going to highlight the things that you think are going to be on the test. Right. And some textbooks are really wordy and some textbooks have too many pictures and too little information. And some textbooks have too much information and too little pictures. So when you're watching podcasts, what, you know, Red Me podcasts, they do, they are accurate sometimes. They do say things that are just like, yes, this makes sense. Right. But it's just, there's too much fluff. There's too much pictures. There's too much entertainment, bombast, whatever you call it. 
in between the important parts. And it takes a certain level of person to, to really pay attention to be like, ah, that thing he just said, pause, pause the video, hold on. That what he said is very important. And that's why one of the, one of the best examples of this is the, the Fresh and Fit Rage Phase video, which I've seen multiple times because I'm like, wow, this is really good stuff. Professionally, I have to say that from a red pill perspective, this is really good stuff, right? Because the biggest thing they harp on, which I will get here into a second, is that that your value is not tied into women, and they and they yell it at you, right? And it's just like that's a tough thing for men to understand because they see hip hop artists and they see all these people and they see that if you if they have women, they'll be respected. I'm like, dude, you don't need women to be respected, right? You never have, and you never you never. A woman is is an eventuality. It's a downstream effect of success. It's not part of the success. It is downstream is an eventuality, right? If you are a guy that's fit, has a decent job, is you know slightly charming, and has something to do besides complain about women, you will eventually be married, or have the opportunity to be married. It you will have that opportunity. So, yeah. It, when you look at this content, even my content, no matter what show I'm on, and you're really looking for help, right? Realize that different content creators have different styles, and some content creators will deliver constantly the things you need at that time, right? Sometimes you're in a space where you don't need entertainment, you need information. Remember, YouTube is divided will divide your type of content by entertainment, information, lifestyle, so on and so forth. Think like that. 